So here, if you go back to your local object repository in Asmol, in this uh, local object repository, all of the objects that you are adding here, if you expand those uh, queue interview questions, register, right? All of these objects are local to this particular test that you are adding. So these objects, your other colleagues who are working on a different other test, they will not be able to use this local object repository. They will not be able to use these objects from this repository. But remember the purpose of working in a team is they will be using like whatever object you already have processed they will not have to be adding those again they will be able to save time by using your object does it make sense they, they they should be able to use your object repository but if you add them in the local object repository then the problem is they will not be able to use this object from this local object repository they they, they will have to do the same thing again so that's why when you do recording, your objects will be added to the local object repository. But whenever you do recording, the object the objects will always be added to the lo local object repository. But if you keep it in the local local object repository, then we, you will not be able to your colleagues will not be able to share those. So what what the ideal practice here? Whatever you are adding in a local object repository. The ideal practice is move them from the local object repository to a shared object repository. Now, what is the difference between local object repository and shared object repository? This is a very good interview question, right? What is the difference between local object repository and uh, shared, ob shared object repository? Is the, the difference is local object repository cannot be used or reused in other tests, but Shared object repository, people will be able to use it. People will be able to use it for their purpose. Now, now you understand what is the difference between local object repository and uh, and the shared object repository? Very good, okay. Now, how do you create a shared object repository, right? So if you click on, uh, do you have to uh, add a, char a charger to your laptop? Oh, sure. Okay, so here, um, how do you create this uh, shared object repository from a local object repository if you click on file and then can you see export local objects right hold on file there are two options export local objects and export and replace local objects right if you only do export these objects will still be in your local object repository and then if you do export and replace then it will be export to a shared object repository plus all of these objects from this local object repository will be removed now select that second option okay and then here right in this folder let's say you create a folder new folder new folder name it as uh, object repositories And then inside that, name this object repository as, can you see file name? Name it as QA Quotients Repository. Create. Okay. And then close it. Now can you see if you, if you open your local object repository again there is nothing right 
Now, if you can you see there is another objective is to be there. Close it. Close it. Can you see QA after under the QA? Can you see there another object? Double click on that. And can you see all of the objects move to that uh, shared object repository? Now people will be able to that uh, that shared object repository is everyone can reach it from that location. They can associate it with with their test. Okay. Now let's let's do this one thing. Yeah. If you click on that pencil. On top, can you see the pencil on top in the menu bar? Then you will be able to edit it. Click on that pencil. Then, okay. Close. Uh, let's say close that. Okay, Nazmol. So let's do this, Nazmol. After, after you have, let's say that after you have submitted, right? If you go back to that website, after you have submitted, right? Let's say that you want to verify something. Okay. So let's say that uh, you want to verify that your uh, what is what is the verification point when you submit something? Then what what is the thing that you need to verify? After you submit, you get a message on top. Can you see? something went wrong and then error occurred in database insert right these are because this record is already there in the database you got it so these records are already there in the database so that's why you are getting this message okay now let's say that if you get that error occurred in database insert if you get that message then you can successfully say that okay this uh, registration was not successful is that correct okay and if you get a successful let's say when you uh, when you successful so can you see error occurred in database insert if you get that message what is your decision that registration was not successful right now how do you verify if you get this message or not right so what you do add that object can you see error occurred in database insert add that object in your repository now go to your uh, shared object repository you'll see that without recording right you can add object to your repository click on pencil and then can you see that plus button click on this and then click on that error record yeah click on that right click on okay now can you see that object is added? That is a web element. That is a web element, right? Now how? So if you get this Nazmol, then definitely there is a problem happened, right? There is a problem happened in your uh, registration process. Is that correct? Now how you are going to use that in your code? Now bring your code window. You can make this uh, object repository smaller. And you can, can you see that, uh, hold on, can you see that uh, object properties? You, in the middle, middle there is object properties. You can make that one smaller by dragging to the right. No, no, no. Uh, come to the close to the pencil. No, 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 all the way down. Can you see the vertical uh, line? Put your cursor on, on, on that. Can you see the vertical line besides? No, not that. On the right. No, no, no. On the left. Here, here. Can you see all these pencils? Yeah, put your cursor close to that vertical line on the right. On the right of the pencil. Okay, make it. Can you see? Okay. Okay, now. So how you are going to use that error record? If, how you are going to check if you get that error record message, right? Dra put your cursor in line number 19. Mm -hmm. And then bring the object repository, drag and drop that object in line number 19. Can you see how easy it is? Now what you do, you need to check if this object is present or not, right? 
So put uh, in line number 19, bring your cursor in the beginning. Put value equal to value equal to okay and then can you stand there is a click remove that click yeah yeah remove that click now value equal to now let's say if that object is displayed Nazmul if that object is displayed then the value will be true if that object is not displayed the value will be false does it make sense no no now and then after uh, line number 19 press enter if type if and then press space can you see how easy it is if value equal to yeah 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 if value equal to if value equal to true uh, value equal to true true then what do you say uh, uh, error message is displayed displayed so if, if value equal to true the error message is displayed you can highlight that error message right so copy this uh, browser to okay error record up to this copy and then after line number 20 press enter <coughs> okay paste highlight and then press enter and then type print print mm -hmm. space double quote registration is unsuccessful Mm -hmm. And then press enter after this line number 22. Else. Enter. Alanda else. To if. Yeah. Press uh, go to the next line. Okay, here. Else print registration is successful. Okay, now run it. Go to your off. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. It's done. If you have selected it once, typically that's all. Now, can you see object property method value, right? Object doesn't support this property value equal to browser, right? Now, so here is the problem. Object doesn't support this uh, property or method value, right? Stop here. There is a syntax error there. So can you see? over their action so after that web element error occurred in database right after that put a dot dot exist mm -hmm. exist now here let's say that okay now run run one more time
yeah temporary yeah and then click run now that's all you do not have to do it again and again is displayed yeah now now you know like the difference right right okay now let's do this now okay so let's say that if the object is there then you are getting that okay now if you look at your output Look at your output window. The window is all the way to the down. All the way down. Mm -hmm. Go all the way to the down. Can you see the all the uh, more down? All the way to the down uh, near the Chrome button, go Chrome browser in your taskbar. Can you see output on top of it? No, no, no. Uh -huh. Can you see registration is unsuccessful? Whatever you type there, this message is here. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, let's say Nazmo that you want to check uh, if a registration is successful, right? So, go to your action. Wait, Nazmo, a little bit. I'm coming. So here Nazmol, let's say that when you are inputting your user ID, right? If you put a unique value every time, will it show successful or unsuccessful? Uh -huh. Okay, let's do this then. Can you see in line number seven you have a highlight? Press enter here. Okay. Now what we are going to do here is let's say that we put um, y a variable str no str str variable str remove that y str y m d actually y m d no actually yeah y m d h m s i'm just giving any name or let's say str timestamp str timestamp t i m e t uppercase always camel case follow the camel case time stamp equal to equal to year type year no doesn't matter year put parenthesis now now type now close parenthesis and then put a M person. Yeah. M percent is on top of seven. Yeah. And then month now. Now. And then put another M person. Day now. Day, 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 day now. M person. Hour now. M person. Minute now. M person. Second now, right? Now copy that str timestamp. 
only the str timestamp and then can you see nas123 remove that 123 you have removed something from seconds mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and remove that nas 123 123 only remove that 123 Keep okay. NAS and then put that so closing uh, parenthesis, uh, uh, closing quotation. No quotation. And then put ampersand here and paste. Okay. And then put a breakpoint on line number eight. Okay. Now run it. Your breakpoint if breakpoint will work, but yeah, run it. You already will have that twice. Yeah. So here, here is the thing. Um, you have the is it is it does it stop on the breakpoint? this code into bigger can you see Nazmol that oh you have you are inputting NAS first on line number six you do not need that but we have it here now can you see if you go to your uh, local variables can you see on the lower lower side out besides output there is a local variables on it do you have any local variable at the moment? But after you execute line number eight, execute, execute line number eight, just can you see that arrow Nazmol here? No, 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 on top. No, on top, besides the play button, besides the play button and stop button, see the arrow? Yeah, click once here. Okay, now in the local variable, what do you see? What, what does it like what do, how does it come like how did we created this string remember str timestamp equal to year now can you see 2020 zero one 2020 and month is one and what is the date today 25 today 125 and then what is the hour now 12 what is the minute now what is the second what the on that time the second was sorry you got it how we get that the whole year and put it in that variable str timestamp i made that like a unique value and put that value in that str timestamp variable. Now, what do you have in str timestamp variable? Mm -hmm. Now, now line, if you execute line number nine, execute line number nine. Okay, now if you go back to the application, what do you uh -huh. the Sorry. username and then it, it put a username unique username is that correct do you understand what we are doing okay now you run it instead of uh, going now you understand how you can go step by step here like this is called debugging now you know how to debug From there and it will be executing line by line you got it how we are doing it yeah. yeah now if you run it instead of debugging now click on replay can you see there is a replay button yeah continue continue yeah click on that
now what do you see now can you see the error occurred in database object was not found in the object repository line number 20 right line number 20 is creating a problem can you see that object is not there is the object there uh -huh. so object was not found in the object repository check the object repository to confirm that the object exists right now it is creating a problem if the object is your application have changed so because that object is no longer there right that object is no longer there it is creating a problem right now if you go to your application let's go to your application yeah yeah now can you see in your application error occurred in database right error occurred in database something went wrong that object is still since that object is still there error occurred in data oh is it uh, is it the message error occurred in database insert Okay, okay. Now let's go to the object repository. Bring that object repository, make it, uh, bring that object, make it a little bit bigger and expand that register. Okay, and then uh, where is that object? Can you see the object is, you didn't save it and you have closed probably. That object is not there, right? You got it? Like if you close, if you do not save and if you close the object repository, then that object will no longer be there. Mm, yeah. So what do you need to do? Add that object one more time. Click on the edit and then and make sure you click on that save button. Uh, run it one more time. Is a uh, ST or timestamp the name? It's a variable. Oh, it's like a, it's, you can, it's, um, it's like a, you can make it. Any name, yeah. You don't, like in Java, you have to declare int or str first and then you can use it, right? Here, you, you can use it without declaring. Okay, now instead of, uh, yeah, click on it. Now, can you see the timestamp is a different one now? Okay, yeah, uh -huh. click on replay. Right, error message is still there, Nazmul. Right, okay, but <coughs> we want to avoid this error message. If you go back to your action now, what I think the email address you will have to put a unique email address too. So, what we are going to do, we are going to use that instead of one, two, three, we are going to put the timestamp in the email address. How you are going to do? No, 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 keep it. We are going to use the same timestamp here in the email address can you see instead of one two three can you see that one two three remove that one two three in the email address right and then we have to insert the timestamp here after nas you got it after nas so let's do this let's put a double quote mm -hmm. now can you see on the left hand side you have nas on the right hand side at gmail.com right you put two ampersand here okay and then in the middle of the ampersand put that timestamp so what happens right we have a string nas and then by ampersand we ampersand is for adding one string with another string you got it Remember on that timestamp what we did? 
er now and then ampersand that means we are adding the strings together so now what we did nas and then we want to add the timestamp with it and then we want to add the remaining thing so that we put it in that way you understood yeah run it one more time yeah No, do not step into uh, but you will see if you go to your local variables right can you see and okay yeah run it now continue replay now can you see emulate this how it is appearing now do you have error messages no right now you know how to generate a dynamic text dynamic message right and now if you go to your output skip this window and go to your output oh it is there okay now you can you see uh, in the output registration is successful in the output yeah, yeah, I see it. now when the registration is successful screen what do you see Go to, go to your uh, window go to your app application when the registration is successful you see thank you for registering and admin will approve your registration soon right now let's say when your registration is successful you want to make sure that okay you are you are verifying this message is displayed and you are highlighting this message and you give a you already you are giving okay registration is successful right so how do you how will you add this object to the repository? We want to add the thank you. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if you want to do that in your uh, repository, go to your repository. After the print registration is successful, after that you put that. Uh -huh. Yeah. No, no, no. Press Control Z. You can copy a, a cut it from there or remove it okay and uh, put it yeah after yeah after the after that put your cursor after line number 25 mm -hmm. and then drag and drop that object here uh, add it one more time that And then make sure you save it no 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 yeah yeah, yeah. okay and then okay. say click on the save button okay. now do it instead of click it will be a highlight mm -hmm. um, no you do not have to do value here we are not checking anything on it if if uh, value equal to true right if the error message is there then we will say that yeah unsuccessful but the, if the error message is not there then we definitely know it will be coming to the else block and if the error message is not there that means registration is successful it will put that yeah it will, it will highlight the thank you message now remove that breakpoint nazmol clear your output can you see output window? There is a cross button on top. Yeah. Okay. Now. Need to...
Mm-hmm. Yeah, value. If you want to put a if condition, we didn't put a if condition here because we know that if if the output message is not there, it will be coming to the else block. And when it is in the else block, that means our registration is successful. Yeah, if you want to verify it, you will have to make another if statement. Or you can put a else if here. Okay, let's do this else if. Okay. So, yeah, run it now and then we'll do that else if. Yeah, every time it is giving new value. No, but it should highlight that thank you, right? Yeah, let's take a look what is happening in the code. Oh, it is, uh, no, it is in the 20, 20, line number 20. So, yeah, now it highlighted, right? Oh, because we have a breakpoint. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me tell you. Why, why did it take so long, right? This is another very good question. If you go to the action, can you see value equal to exist? Okay. Now, go to file. Settings, file, settings. Settings. And then, uh, if you come here, uh, click on the run menu. Okay, on the left hand side, can you see it? Run. And can you see object synchronization timeout? Yeah. So when it is 20 second, can you see it is 20 second object synchronization timeout? So then in line number 20, move this message aside. So in line number 20, we are looking for that error occurred in database message, right? That message is not there. So it will be waiting 20 seconds for that message. Object, can you see object synchronization time? It will be waiting 20 seconds before it decides, okay, the object is not there. Now close that, close that. You can change it here, that 20 seconds, you can make 10 seconds, but you can, the, the smart way of doing it, close it. Can you see in the line number 20, after exist, you put a parenthesis parenthesis and put three so then it will be waiting up to three seconds instead of waiting 20 seconds quick step quick wait okay now we are going to bring a else instead of else we are going to put else if put else if else if and then you bring that uh, thank you for registering message from line number 26 copy from line number 26 copy browser uh, yeah no, no we are not going to do value thing here so else after else if paste that after else if line number 24 yeah, we put a space and paste it. Okay, else if this one, remove that then. Okay, dot, put a dot after that object, dot, exist, exist, put three seconds in the parentheses. So what will happen if you put a value, then the, it is, easy to understand. First you verify if the object is there and the value is true or false is in the value variable and you check if value equal to true. Here in line number 24 instead, we are directly checking. Instead of putting it in a value, we are directly checking if it exists. If it exists, it will return a true. If it doesn't exist, it will return a false. So, okay, so from the beginning, since it's value, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Else if means if value, if the if the first condition, if the condition in line number twenty one is true, then it will be executing uh, line number twenty two and twenty three. If that condition in line number twenty one, if it is not true, then it will be executing the else block. It will check if the other message is there, if the thank you message is there. Mm -hmm. Check if the thank you message is there. If the thank you message exists, then the whole value from browser to exist, the whole value of this will be true. Successful. Yeah. And then put a final else block. If none of the above two condition is true, press enter, press enter, press tab, print, something, something went wrong let's put something went wrong that we do not know registration is not successful we didn't get the error message something else happened okay something went wrong does it make sense now so the if else if else condition do you understand this clearly yeah yeah and it i'll uh, so i'll say that nazmul Remember that in QA questions, right? You have five test cases. I'd say that uh, executing those uh, five test cases will be a better test for you. Automating those five test cases. But how do you find UFT? But remember that I'll, I'll, I'll show you one more thing before I go for another topics. It seems like at this point, the application is not opening. Your test will be failing soon. So if you go to your uh, UFT, let's go to your UFT. So it is, can you see it is struggling here? It will be showing error message soon. You will get error message. Sometimes the website will not work. The application will not be coming. So in that situation, you will see. Yeah, it could be a bug. Yeah. Oh, now it is coming. It took a long, long time. So. So here, um, um, it, it will be able to verify and then, can you see it didn't wait that long here, right? And then finally our execution is done. Okay, Nazmol. Now, let's go back in your action and in the first line, press enter. Mm -hmm. And then put a line, option explicit. Option, yeah, option uh -huh, explicit. Mm -hmm. Okay, now go to uh, design, design menu, design, mm -hmm. and say tax syntax. Can you see there is a tax syntax? Everything is good. Now run it. Yeah, yeah.
you'll see an error message appears here with variable undefined str timestamp it is kind of error message like you see in java right you are trying to use that variable str timestamp but it is complaining that you didn't define it right yeah now you have to define it option explicit remember if you do not use option explicit you might be using some variable let's say option str timestamp you are trying to use it in another place and you put a spelling mistake in timestamp but complain about the variable but it will give you incorrect result it will like instead of timestamp let's say if you if you are trying to use that str timestamp in another place and you made a spelling mistake in str timestamp right then it will replace it with nothing and it will not complain so that's why if you put option explicit you will have to declare the variable and every time you use it if you make a spelling mistake it will it will complain like this now stop it and then after option explicit after option explicit put dim enter enter dim uh -huh, space str timestamp yeah int yeah that is how you declare variable here now you run it one more time now now let's do this can click cancel so now can you see you are using str timestamp in uh, okay now run it let's run it What about this? Mm -hmm. That too, yeah. Click stop. After STR timestamp, put a comma, declare another variable value. All of the variables, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, let's say that before you run it, Let's put a spelling mistake here. Can you see str timestamp? Number uh, 16. Mm -hmm. Instead of timestamp, put key, key I am, remove that E. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. And then deem, right, the line number two, comment it out. Put a, put a control question mark. Control M, Control M. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you run it. Now, uh, before you run it, before you run it, put a breakpoint on line number 16. And put a breakpoint on line number uh, 11. Run it. Run it. Now, what what is it complaining about? Everyone has a fine start time stamp, and that is because of line number. Uh, right stop it we understand why it is complaining right comment out line number one as well here uh, put a comment on line number one control question mark yeah 
Now you run it. Yeah, option explicit is to make the code safer. Uh -huh. Now, just execute this line. And then, if you go to the application, now can you see username, it put the right username? Okay, then keep executing. Keep executing there. Now keep executing. Uh -huh. And then it will stop in line number 16 where it will be inputting email, right? Remember, oh yeah, line number 16, put a uh, click on next. Next uh, in the execution. On the loop, yeah. Yeah, next. And then now we should see input email. Yeah, click next again and next. Now, why, if you go back to your application, why, why the email is looking like this? But why the timestamp is not coming? Mrs. Felery, right? But notice that it didn't complain. It is inputting and it will be moving forward. Keep running now. It didn't complain, right? It was still it submitted the registration, right? But did it do what you were expecting? It uh, We were expecting that we will be inputting the email with the timestamp. Now it did something that we didn't want. Right? You understand what is the disadvantage of using a variable with wrong name in in bb scripting it will still do the work but it will mess up your work false data now if you bring both of this line line number one and two okay bring back press ctrl m again uh -huh. run it one more time Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Now click on next. Uh, actually, click on uh, continue. Now click on next. Click on next. Here you will see. Now, can you see? Since you have made a spelling mistake, it is like it is pointing out a finger to you. Hey man, you made a mistake. Right? Correct it. You cannot get with get forward with it. Is it not helpful? So that that's why using option explicit is always recommended thing. Okay? understand now what is the what is the error and what is the use of using uh, option explicit and with option explicit if you make a spelling mistake what will happen you understand everything right if i had like a spelling mistake mm -hmm. if i so i decided to declare that as well then it wouldn't if if you if you declare that yeah that will not be an error that is correct Call it out, yeah. It will name name it will name it, and it will like it will not giving you uh, like wrong impression that you are doing your job, but even though you are making mistakes. Does it make sense? Are we good up to this? Okay. So here, Nazmol, let me stop this recording, and I'll be sending you this recording. Now after that, Nazmol. I have a, another things uh, I need to show you and then I will 
uh, call our session off today. Yeah. Let me stop. Yeah, I'm stopping and then I'll be doing another recording for another uh, video on LM, but I stop this and then I'll be doing a separate recording.